Okay, so this is the marking period one exam review packet for the honors class. Make sure you've got your reference table and a calculator ready to go. Number one, the diagram below represents a portion of a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. What is the reading of the meniscus? The meniscus is that curvature of the liquid. So it looks like each of these is one milliliter. So we're right in the middle at 35.0. Oops. Milliliters. The diagram below shows a titration lab setup. What are the pieces of lab equipment? So B, I know, is an Erlenmeyer flask. And A is a burette. Whoops. Which set of laboratory equipment would most likely be used with a crucible? So a crucible is that tiny little like cup thing, like an acorn. And so you would need to support that using the clay triangle. And what supports this is the crucible tongs, which are these. So once again, that is A, three A's in a row. The diagram below represents a portion of a triple beam balance. If the beams are in balance with the riders in the position shown, what is the total mass of the object? So I agree with 545. We're sure of the ones which means this, these are the tenths, one, two. And so we're sure of the tenths, which means we can only go out one more spot, which would be, it looks like it's right on. So 545.20 grams, which is choice C. Reading the meniscus to the proper number of sig figs. So looks like each of these lines go up by one whole milliliter, okay? So this is 74, 75, 76. So in between 75 and 76. So it looks like maybe 75.7. So the question is, do we put <clears throat> an additional zero there? So I am sure of the, of the tens, sure of the ones. This is where I'm estimating is the tenths. I can't be sure of the tenths and then estimate one further. I need to be estimating this one. I'm gonna change this color by the way. So it is just simply 75.7. You can't be sure to two decimal place. Which uh, temperature change indicates an increase in the average kinetic energy of the molecules of a sample? So we don't have the same temperature scale. So let's go, whoops, let's go to our reference tables. At table T, you will find the formula to convert from Kelvin to Celsius and vice versa. So if you have Celsius, add 273. If you have Kelvin, subtract 273. So let's make everything in Kelvin. So 15 plus 273 is 288. We're looking for an increase in temperature because average kinetic energy is temperature. That is an increase. That should be my answer. Just to make sure, 37 plus 273 is 310. That goes down. Three, uh, 0 plus 273 is 273. That also goes down. And 25 plus 273 is 298. That also goes down. <clears throat> so make sure they're all on the same scale. You could have made them all into degrees Celsius. doesn't matter. An aluminum sample has a mass of 80.01 grams and a density of 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter. According to the data, to what number of sig figs should the calculated volume of the aluminum be expressed? So we have density, mass, and we're looking for volume. So the formula, let's just prove it to you. It's here on table T right at the top. Density equals mass over volume. So that formula, we actually don't have to solve this. We just need to figure out how many sig figs. So density would be 2.70. That has three sig figs. The mass would be 80.01, which is four sig figs. So we're doing some multiplying and dividing. And so the rule is when you multiply or divide, you round to the fewest number of total sig figs, which would be three. So that's our answer. And the answer, we don't care what it is. Which unit is used to express an amount of thermal energy? So let's go back to the reference table. Thermal energy, 
on table D, thermal energy. I see joule, which is energy, work, quantity of heat. And I know thermal means heat. So I'm going to go with joule. And that is a choice. <clears throat> Number nine, which Kelvin temperature is equal to 200 degrees Celsius? So 200, once again, we add 273 and we get 473 Kelvin. Okay, so we have two different uh, things. We have a metal bar and two centimeter rulers. Portions of the rulers have been enlarged to show detail. What is the greatest degree of precision to which the metal bar can be measured by ruler A and by ruler B? So ruler A, we have, we're sure of the ones, so we'd be estimate the tenths. So to the tenths by ruler A. Ruler B, we're sure of the ones, this is 16.1, 16.2, 16.3, so we're sure of the tenths, so we'd go one further to the hundredth. So the nearest tenth by ruler A and to the nearest hundredth by ruler B. So number 10 should be C. Which quantity is equal to 200 joules? So remember, kilojoules are a 1,000 times larger. So I'm going to do my work down here. So 200 joules to get rid of what we seek is kilojoules. One kilojoule, I'm trying to get rid of the joules. That way, joules cancel out. So I'm basically going to do 200 divided by 1,000. But you can put it in your calculator, or you can move your decimal place one, two, three spots to the left you get 0.2 kilojoules. So let's see. Which measurement contains four sig figs? So remember the rule is if you have a number greater than one without a decimal point, we start from the right and we move this way. So this would be one, two, three, four sig figs. That's our answer. This would only be three. The number's less than one, you start at the decimal place and move towards the right. So we'd skip this first zero here, and we count eight, six, that'd be two sig figs. We would count all three here. So part C has four. Uh, expressed to the correct number of sig figs, the sum of two masses is 445.2, which two masses produces the answer? So remember with addition and subtraction, we go to the fewest number of decimal places. So if I only have one decimal place, I need to find an answer that only has one decimal place. Two and three, three and two, choice C. Yeah, a lot of C's in a row. How many kilojoules are equivalent to 10 joules? So 10 joules is our given. I seek kilojoules, one kilojoule over a thousand joules. So I'm gonna do 10 divided by a thousand and I get 0 0.01 kilojoules, kilojoules. The measurement 0 0.41006 grams rounded to three sig figs. Okay, so start at the decimal place. I'm gonna count 410. Does a zero round a zero up? No, it does not. So there it is, 15 is B. A student intended to make a salt solution with a concentration of 10 grams of solute per liter of solution. If the student solution was analyzed, it was found to contain 8.90 grams of solute per solution, liter solution. What is the percent error? So again, the formula is here on table T. So percent error is measured value minus accepted over accepted times 100. So, um, We wanted the 10, but we actually got eight. So we 10 will go down here. So 10 minus 8.9 gives you 1.1. So, so you subtract, and it doesn't matter how you subtract as long as you get a positive number. So 1.1 divided by 10 gives you 0 0.11 times 100 gives you 11% choice C. The accepted value for the molar volume of gas is 22.4, but we got 24.8, again, another percent error. So let's subtract 24.8 minus 22.4, and you get 2.4 over your accepted, which is 22.4, 
times 100. So let me do that. And I get 10.714 blah, 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 which would be choice C. Uh, all these activities are safe lab practices except for wearing goggles. That's definitely safe. Leaving boiling water unattended is safe. Um, cleaning cabinets before storing. Yes, that's rinsing glass. Uh-oh. Hmm. Oh, I read this too quickly. See? You got to read. What is not safe? What is not safe? And that would be leaving boiling water unattended. Yeah, I, I went through that too quickly. Be careful. Oops. A sign in a chemistry lab says never drink from the glassware. What is the most likely reason for that? Many chemicals are poisonous. Yeah, that's true. Chemicals are reused. Mm, no. It could spread germs. Sure, but that's not the most important thing. Glassware could be at broken places. Uh, maybe, but the real reason is the poisonous part. Which is, this is the same question? Oh, no. Which is not lab safe. Wearing goggles is safe. Wafting is safe. Pouring them down the drain is not safe. Because you can't always assume that things going down the drain should go down the drain. All right, looks like we're doing Q equals MC delta T for this one because I see heat. And so, again, let's go back to the reference tables. Um, and we have right here under the heat formulas, Q equals MC delta T, where Q is equal to heat. M is equal to mass, the specific heat capacity here, and delta T is a change in temperature. Don't forget that the delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. The specific heat of water is found on the front of the reference tables, and that is 4.18 joules per gram Kelvin, which is also, you could use that same value, degrees Celsius. So going back to here, Q equals MC. Now, I'm not going to put in delta T. I'm going to put in the definition for delta T, which is T final minus T initial, because I'm looking for final temperature. I need to put in the definition of that. And then I just have to find final temperature. So Q is 209. Mass is 10. Specific heat is 4.18. And sorry, that's an 8. And then TF minus your initial, which is 23. All right, so I apologize that that is small. So we're going to do 4.18 times 10. 4.18 times 10, which is 41.8. So 209, again, is 41.8 times the quantity TF minus 23. Let's divide both sides by 41.8. So 209 divided by 41.8 gives you 5. I'm gonna, where am I going to put it? Here. 5 equals TF minus 23. So to get rid of 23, we're going to add 23 to both sides. And you're going to get 28 equals TF. And there it is. So when they ask you for a final temperature or an initial temperature, you simply have to put the um, definition in for delta T. Three forms of energy are chemical. I agree. Exothermic, no. Uh, chemical, thermal, electromagnetic. Yes, that's it. Because temperature is not a form of energy and endothermic is not a form of energy. So that was done. Remember that heat flows from hot to cold, high temperature to low temperature. In a laboratory where the air temperature is, a, is 22, a steel cylinder at 100 is submerged in a sample of water of 40. So why don't you draw it? So here's water at 100. We've got uh, steel, 40, and we've got, let's get a new color here. Yeah, let's do it to a green, 22. So let's talk about how heat is flowing. It's going to flow from the water to the container and the container to the air because hot to cold. So this, the air to the, the air is the coldest. So heat is not going to flow from the air to anything. Um, the cylinder to the water. Cylinder. Oh, gosh. I screwed this up. Hold on. 
All right, so the water, whoops, bear with me here. Water is at 40 and the cylinder is at 100. So let's now draw cylinder to the water, water to the air. Cylinder to the water, water to, there we go. Okay, yeah, hot to cold and reading. <laughs> reading questions really help. Releases of energy that's exothermic. Anything solid to liquid, liquid to gas would be endo. Anything gas to liquid, liquid to solid would be exo. You can also have those big jumps. So we're just gonna give off heat. That's gonna be when a solid goes to, nope, when a gas goes to liquid. So water vapor on your steamy bathroom mirror becoming the particulates of liquid water, which is the highest average kinetic energy. So don't forget that average kinetic energy is temperature. So we don't care about the amount of water, about the amount. We care about the temperature. So 25 uh, is number part A, 95. All right, don't forget, we gotta read because I got the last one wrong. Um, the transfer of heat is from hot to cold. A 50 gram block of copper at 10 degrees is carefully lowered into 100 grams of water at 90. So 90, the water is hotter than the block. So the water loses heat to the block. Block gains heat from the water. No. Wait, yes. Because the copper is hotter. Water loses heat and the block gains heat, that's true. Water gains heat and the block loses heat. Um, no, it can't be D because the water is cold, hotter. Water is hotter, so it's not going to gain more heat. Water is going to lose heat in the, in the, to the block until they're both at 10. No, that's too far. The block gains heat from the water until they're both at 90. No, they can't be. Water loses heat. Black gain seat until there's somewhere in between. Yes, somewhere in between. Which statement defines the temperature of a sample? Temperature is a measure of the total electromagnetic energy, total thermal energy, average potential energy, average kinetic energy. So this is one of our favorite definitions. It's average kinetic energy. Be careful. Temperature is not a measure of total thermal energy. Thermal energy is heat. And heat and temperature, they are slightly different. Oops. Number 28, this is a classic one that people get wrong. Sorry, I'm just arranging myself here. Um, the temperature of a sample changes from 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. How many Kelvin does the temperature change? So 10 to 20 is 10 degrees Celsius. If we go from 10 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, that's what, 283? And this would be 293. What's the change? 10 Kelvin. So the change is just 10. We're not looking to convert the change to Kelvin. We're looking for how many Kelvin does it change. And so in 28 would be A. Which phase is giving off heat, exo? So that would be gas to liquid, liquid to solid, or gas to solid. So choice C, putting that water into the freezer to make it ice cubes is giving off heat. All right, another Q equals MC delta T. We're looking for mass this time. So 420 equals M times specific heat of water, 4.18. T final is 20, T initial is 10. So 41.8 times M equals 420. So let me get my calculator. Divide 420 divided by 41.8 you get 10.04, so that would be choice B, which is 10. 31, which is a mixture. A mixture has two different components. We're looking for the water, because this would be LiCl, which is a solid, and H2O liquid coming together, that's an L. So that would be our mixture, homogeneous mixture. How many joules of heat are released in 50 grams of water? Cool. Okay, so Q equals MCLT, Q equals? Uh, 50 times 4.18 T final minus T initial. So technically you would have negative 10, but I, we're going to account for that for the fact by it says it's cooled. So the difference would be 10. 
So we have 50 times 4.18 times 10, 2,090 joules. Uh, that's not exactly there, but 2,100 is. So it looks like they're rounding to two sig figs. Two grams of potassium chloride are completely dissolved in a sample of water. How would you classify it? So water is a substance, potassium chloride is a substance. So it has to be a mixture. Now, if it's completely dissolved, it would mean uniform the same throughout, so it would be a homogeneous mixture. We've got these things, which is a mixture of elements A and B. So a mixture of elements. X is a compound, one compound. So it can't be this one either. Um, oh no, yeah, Z only. So Z has elements A, which are white, Elements, but yeah, it's got to be B. No, it's got to be Z. Yeah, B, because X is not. So yeah, very good. Very good, me. At room temperature, how could you separate sand and water? So sand and water, ionization, combustion, filtration, sublimation. Well, I could do filtration because the sand particles are large and they would stay in a filter and the water would pass through the filter. The other ones don't even make sense. Which sample can be separated into different substances by a physical means? That would have to be a mixture, which would once again be our aqueous solution. If you wanted to break these other things apart, that would be a chemical reaction. A beaker contains alcohol and water. These liquids can be separated by distillation because the liquids have different boiling points. That's the whole definition of um, distillation. Four statements about atoms are shown below. Atoms, electrons have wave-like properties. Atoms have small negatively charged particles. The center of an atom is small and dense. Atoms are hard individual spheres. Historical development. So which came first? Hard indivisible spheres came first. This is Democritus. What came next? Well, John Dalton did not change anything. He came up with the atomic theory. Then it was J.J. Thompson and the plum pudding model. And he said electrons are like little negative chocolate chips in a lump of positive dough. So that looks like B would come next. Okay, that doesn't change anything because both of those is DB. Then is it A or C? So then after Thompson comes Rutherford and Rutherford had the gold foil experiment which said that atoms have a small dense positively charged nucleus and are also made of mostly empty space so it looks like b comes no it looks like c comes next so and then a yeah so choice d carbon is classified as an element rather than a compound because it has been known for many centuries it combines with oxygen to form a gas Cannot be decomposed into two or more substances as formed when wood is heated without the presence of air can be found in many pure forms. Now look, I know there are five choices here and you're getting confused, but elements cannot be decomposed into anything more. So that is, uh, any compound could, but carbon is an element because that's it. Which is an element? Detergent, wood, barium, brass, hydrochloric acid. Are you kidding me? If you really didn't know, table S has all the elements. And that would be um, C, barium. I thought hydrochloric acid had an H. I think this is spelled wrong. Oh, well. Which common substance is a mixture? Baking soda, salt, sugar, water, or air? So I know that water is H2O. I know that salt would be any kind of compound, but definitely NaCl. Um, sugar, baking soda, baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. No, sugar, maybe C6H12O6, glucose. Air is a mixture, because what's in air? Nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, maybe some water. Look, at it's a whole mix of those different things. So mixture, 41E. A mixture consists of two or more components in any proportion, equal proportions, definite proportions, constant proportions, one proportion only. So a mixture. Think about salt water. Salt water from the ocean is super duper salty. 
Salt water in the form of saline for your contact lenses is very, very dilute, not a lot. So they're both called salt water, but the proportions change. So any proportions would be our answer. Which should be used to accurately measure 185 milliliters of aqueous solution? Beaker, Florence flask, volumetric flask, graduated cylinder, or a pipette? Um, this is graduated cylinder. Which subatomic particles are found in the nucleus of an atom of beryllium? How about in an atom of anything? In the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. Which statement describes the charge of an electron and the charge of a proton? An electron and a proton both are positive one. An electron and a proton both are negative one. An electron is a charge of plus one proton. Nope, positive proton. Choice D, 45. We're like halfway there. Getting there. What is the number of electrons in a potassium atom? Okay, so let's go to periodic table. Too far? All right, potassium. So if I have 19 protons, I would have 19 electrons. So it should be 19, wrong one. What is the overall charge of an ion that has 12 protons, 10 electrons, and 14 neutrons? So let's get rid of the one that doesn't have any charge. So positive 12, negative 10. Overall, that would be a plus two charge. The mass of a proton is approximately equal to the mass of, okay, so let's go back to the reference table, to table O, N, O. So the masses are on the top. And this is number of protons or atomic number. So alpha particle is a mass of four, beta particle is a mass of zero, gamma is zero, neutron is one, proton is one, positron is zero. So you are gonna look at that. Well, I'm gonna go back. The mass of a proton, which is one, is approximately the same as a neutron. Double check. In the late 1800s, experiments using the cathode ray tube led to the discovery of, that's J.J. Thompson, the electron. Number 50. Um, what is the atomic number and the mass number? So first of all, atomic number is the number of protons. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Atomic number 9. Mass number is everything else. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I'm sorry, I said mass number is everything else. Mass is protons plus neutrons. So that would be 20. So there's that. 50 is B. Let's go back to blue. As a result of the gold foil experiment, it was concluded that an atom contains protons, neutrons, and electrons. Nope. Contains a small, dense nucleus. Yes. The gold foil experiment led to the conclusion that each atom was composed of mostly empty space because most of the alpha particles, well, if there was nothing there to stop them, they're going to pass straight through. Um, the other ones just don't make sense. What is the charge of a nucleus in an oxygen atom? So don't forget, in the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons, and neutrons don't have any charge. So essentially, when it says the charge of a nucleus, we're looking for number of protons. So let's go to periodic table. I'll go to the big one so you can see it. Oxygen has eight protons plus eight. Also, it wouldn't be negative. The formation of the nuclide 137 cesium gives information about mass number, atomic number, both or neither. So I see the mass is 137. I see the atomic number is 55. So it's gotta be both. Uh, atomic history again. Hard sphere comes first, then empty space, then orbitals. 55A. Why is an atom neutral? Because protons equals electrons. Yes, that's right. 
the average atomic mass of magnesium is the, oh, sorry, the atomic mass of magnesium is the weighted average of the atomic masses of all the artificially produced, all the naturally occurring, the two most abundant, the two most, uh, nat okay, so, so, to calculate average atomic mass, you need percent abundance, and you need all the masses, and it's masses of the naturally occurring isotopes. So that comes back to our definition. That's a tough one. I had to kind of digest that one for a second. So it comes from, what do you call it? It comes from our notes. Make sure you know how to calculate average atomic mass. Which particle has least mass? So mass is on the top, so that would be choice D, electron. An atom that has eight protons, eight electrons, has an atomic number of nine. No, got an atomic number of eight. Atomic number of 16, no. Mass number of 17. Well, protons and neutrons give you 17. All of the isotopes of a given atom have the same mass number? No, the whole point is that they have different mass numbers. However, their atomic numbers are the same. So things like carbon-14 and carbon-12 and then the other one. 13, which are isotopes of the same element. So different top numbers, same bottom numbers. So, I mean, looking quickly, I would go with A. Yeah. Hydrogen has three isotopes with a mass number of 1, 2, and 3, but your average atomic mass is 1.00794. This information indicates that, well, if you were to do a weighted average and it is so close to 1, that must mean that there's much more abundance of atomic uh, mass of one. So more isotopes have an atomic mass of one than two or three, which is choice C. Now, unfortunately, average atomic mass is not found on the reference table, which is a real bummer. So the formula is percent times mass plus percent times mass, et cetera, et cetera. Divided by 100, if you keep the percentages as whole numbers. If you make the percentages decimals, you don't divide by 100 at the end. So 75% is 0.75. Let me make sure that says 0.75. And that mass is 35. And you're going to add that to 25 and 37. And so let's, whoops, let's go ahead and find my calculator lost in the shuffle here. Where did it go? Oh, goodness. I haven't even moved. Well, anyways, I also have the answer key. Oh, wait. Here it is. So 0.75 times 35 is 26.25. 0.25 times 37 is 9.25. So add those together and you get 35.5. Okay. Number 64, what is the total number of valence electrons of an atom of germanium in the ground state? So there's a couple things we're going to talk about here. So periodic table, germanium is right here. And if you didn't know, you would have to um, go to reference table S and find out. So valence electrons are the outermost. Now I'm using the advanced electron configuration reference table and it's hard to see but it says 4s2 2p2 so that should be four valence electrons because i add them up but sometimes i think that if we look at the other periodic table you might like that better which unfortunately is sideways but the last number in that electron configuration is very clear and you can see that it's a four so the answer would be four. Choice D. In a calcium atom on the ground state, the electrons that can possess the least amount of energy 
So remember, if you're at a concert and here's the stage, I don't know, here's Taylor Swift or something, la, la, and you're front row, you're seeing everything. You're enjoying everything versus the person way back here. Oh, no, can't hear what's going on. Is it blank space or is it, I don't know, it's the other one. <laughs> Shake it off. So you're further away, you can't hear, you're putting in energy, there's people in front of you you can't see, so the least amount of energy would be right up front. Don't make fun of my analogy. All right, um, energy of the electron. So we talked about how the first shell would be the least energy going, increasing, increasing as you go. So lowest energy, highest energy. Um, remember, you could have up to seven shells. Electron in the first shell has more energy than the second. An electron in the first has the same energy as the second. Electron in the third has more energy than the second, yes. When an electron that is excited moves to the ground, so we're crashing. We've been at that Taylor Swift concert. Oh my gosh, so excited, but then we're crashing down. We're giving off energy as we're moving down to the lower state. So we gain energy through heating to go up, can't stay there very long, we crash back down. So choice D, which represents an atom in the excited state. So don't forget that it goes 2, 8, 18, etc. So 2, 7 is on the way. 2, 6, 2, mm, this did not fit fill 8 first. So that's going to be my answer. Um, yeah, so 68. During a flame test, a lithium salt produces a characteristic red flame. This red color is produced when electrons in excited lithium are gained, lost, returned. Okay, so again, the extra energy that is get that is received through heating is given off as the electrons are moving to the lower energy states, from the high states to the low states. Which atom in the ground state has the same electron configuration as the calcium ion Ca plus 2 in the ground? So we need to go to periodic table. So we're looking for Ca plus 2. I'm going to go to the big table so we can see it. I can't figure out how to rotate these pages. So Ca plus 2 has 20 electrons, but plus 2 would mean 18. So 18 electrons is what we're looking for. And actually, I'm going to cheat because I do have a paper right here. So I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. So, argon, argon, potassium, magnesium, neon. So, argon, we're looking for who has 18 electrons normally. Argon has 18 electrons normally because neon has 10 electrons normally. Um, magnesium and potassium are over here. Magnesium has 12 normally. Potassium has 19 normally. So, if we were looking for 18, that would be... Uh, argon. So here we are. Bright line spectrum. Who is in the mixture? Now do this carefully because I get this wrong sometimes. So in the mixture, you've got something here. 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 Here, 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 and here. Okay, so it looks like D and E only. So choice A. Yeah, that's right. Do it carefully, though. In the wave mechanical model, an orbital is defined as a region of the most probable location of electrons. Circular path, these are bore. These are orbitals, A and B, but you got to go for uh, electron. Okay, which orbital notation represents an atom of beryllium in the ground state? So we should probably go back to periodic table and just check out beryllium. Beryllium has four electrons, and you can see it's 1s2, 2s2. So let's go back. 1s2, 2s2. Nothing in the P. So that's easy. <laughs> Nothing in the P orbital region. Sublevel region, sorry. So 73 is C. 
which the following explains why the electric configuration below cannot exist. Um, this right here. Yeah, because Hun's rule says all of them go up, 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 and then you come back and you're down, down, down. And so this guy should not be down. It should go up. That's Hun's rule. Uh, and following, which is the co correct electron configuration for a neutral atom of oxygen in the ground state. So that would be eight electrons. So one S2, two S2. 2p, don't forget Hun's rule. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 4. Choice D. Okay, we've been together for quite some time. If you still have questions uh, or I didn't explain anything well enough, please come see me in class. Thanks for watching.